Many smart homes are unfortunately pretty easy to hack, and getting hacked can have some pretty big implications for your privacy and may even cost you money. Imagine if you have a security camera in your living room and you use that to keep an eye on your pet while you're at work. What would happen if a baddie was able to look through that security camera at you without you knowing? A lot of people falsely downplay what the impact would be if this were to happen. Big deal, they could take a look at my dog while I'm at work. But the impact can be far worse than that. By viewing that camera, a baddie may be able to find out where you keep the valuables in that particular room. Understand the layout of that room, making it quicker to rob you. They might be able to find out if you're home at the time or not. Some cameras have built-in microphones, meaning they'll be able to hear you discussing plans to go on holiday, or going to the ATM to withdraw large amounts of cash. Or maybe the hacker catches you and your partner, or you and someone other than your partner, having an intimate time on the sofa, and they threaten to make that footage public unless you pay them a ransom. There are even stories of people using smart cameras with built-in speakers as child monitors, and then walking in on some complete stranger impersonating Santa Claus to their eight-year-old daughter. In Mississippi, this chilling video from inside Ashley LeMay's home shows her eight-year-old daughter Alyssa frantically searching for an invisible intruder. Who is that? I'm your best friend. I'm Santa Claus. Yuck. And it's not just about cameras either. Smart thermostats can be hijacked over the internet, and a hacker can lock your heating or cooling system at full power, refusing to give you control back until you pay a ransom. Smart door locks and garage door openers can be hacked to allow a burglar easy access to your property. This is only getting worse as manufacturers flood the home automation market with cheap smart devices. In order to get the cost down of these devices, they usually need to make sacrifices somewhere, and security is often one of the first things on the chopping block. Luckily, there are some very easy things you can do to reduce the risk of ending up in one of these nightmare situations. Hey home automation guy. Start the show. Criminals are human, and humans are inherently lazy. Imagine there's a burglar standing in front of two identical houses that they know to be empty at that time. One house has the front door wide open with the lights on. The other one has the front door closed and presumably locked. Which one do you think the burglar is going to rob first? Most smart devices come with a default set of usernames and passwords that you use when you first set them up. Usually it's something like admin admin or admin password. If you leave the default password set on your smart devices, it's the electronic equivalent of leaving your front door wide open. An attacker could easily access your device using these default usernames and passwords, and then they can change the password to something that you don't know, locking you out entirely. At a minimum, you should change the default password on all of your smart devices as soon as you get them. And don't stop at smart devices. You should do the same thing with your broadband router, with your laptop, or an alarm control panel as well. This small step will protect you from a large number of hacking attempts. Most troublemakers out there will try a set of default passwords against your device and if it doesn't work, simply move on to the next victim. This is similar to robbers who walk down the street late at night, checking every single car door until they find one that's unlocked. Sadly though, many of us reuse the same password over and over again, and a lot of our beloved passwords have been leaked in data breaches over the years. To find out if your password is secure or not, there's a website run by a trusted security professional called Have I Been Pwned. You can use this to test your password to see if it's been leaked in any previous data breaches. Baddies have access to huge lists of these leaked passwords that can be fed into the login screen of your smart devices in order to crack these devices at high speed. Once they know what password unlocks one of your smart devices, the odds are pretty high that it's also going to unlock some of your other smart devices or your Amazon account, your email, your online banking account. The best thing you can do is use a unique, strong, secure password on every single device and account that you create. Most people think this is a pretty difficult thing to do, remembering hundreds of different passwords for different things, but this is where password managers come in. A password manager is a secure vault that stores all your unique passwords in a single place. You only ever have to remember one password to unlock the vault and you never use that password anywhere else. Your password manager then takes care of logging you in to all the other websites and devices. Most browsers like Firefox, Chrome and Edge have built-in password managers that synchronize across different tablets, computers and devices. This makes it almost painless to create strong, unique, complex passwords for every single cloud device and account that you use, making you far less likely to get hacked. 
Just make sure you don't use your Vault password anywhere else. Now I know a lot of people are probably thinking keeping all your passwords in one place is probably not that safe, is it? Well this is where two-factor authentication comes in. I recommend that you turn on two-factor authentication on every single account that you use, even your password manager and home assistant. Two-factor authentication combines something that you know, your password, with something that you have, your mobile phone. You'll need to have both of these things with you in order to log into a system. You've probably come across this many times before, where a service will ask you for your mobile phone number so they can send you a unique login code every time you log in. You need to have your phone with you to type that login code in order to gain access to your account. Even if a hacker manages to steal or guess your password, they won't be able to log into your account unless they can also read your text messages or access your two-factor authentication codes as well. By combining all of these password best practices together, you greatly reduce the risk of being hacked and having your private information exposed. Whilst having your password cracked is the most common way people get hacked, it's definitely not the only way. Every smart device is actually running a teeny weeny itty bitty computer inside it, and computers run software. Routers, smart hubs, light bulbs, thermostats, security cameras, just like your smartphone or your home PC, you'll need to regularly install security updates and patches on your smart devices in order to keep them secure. More mature smart devices will probably keep themselves up to date for you with the latest versions. But with some cheaper devices, you will need to log in and perform some steps to manually upgrade them to the latest version. You should get into the habit of checking your smart devices for updates every month or two, and you should turn on automatic updates on all devices that support them. Sure, we've all done updates before that have inadvertently broken something, and an argument could be made that the automatic update process itself could be used as an attack vector to install malicious code, blah 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 blah. For the 99% of us normal people, installing automatic security updates solves far more problems than it creates, and it goes a long way to keeping your smart home more secure. You can check your manufacturer's website for instructions on how to update your smart devices. The process will be slightly different depending on the types of devices that you use. And whilst you're at it, make sure you're also applying security updates to your home computer, smartphone, and most importantly, your home Wi-Fi router. Or better yet, if you're using the Wi-Fi router that was provided to you by your broadband provider, replace it entirely. Most ISPs will probably give you the cheapest broadband router they can get away with, and these tend to have pretty low levels of security. Upgrading your router to a purpose-made device will give you greater control over your security and will probably improve your broadband and Wi-Fi speeds as well. You won't need to spend a ton of money to upgrade to a decent Wi-Fi router. Do a little bit of research and find one that suits your needs. The type of router you'll buy will vary based on the type of internet connection that you have and the number of devices that you want to wire in or connect wirelessly. There's usually a ton of posts on your ISP forums where people are asking questions about this and debating different models that work best. There's also a ton of YouTube channels dedicated to doing wireless router comparisons. Regardless of whether or not you decide to replace your own router, you should definitely set up your own custom wireless name and password. Most ISP provided routers will have the username and password of the Wi-Fi connected stuck to a little card on the back of them. These usually all follow the same pattern of ISP name hyphen some random letters and a similarly generated password for every connection. This makes it pretty easy for anyone within wireless range to figure out what internet connection and router you probably have, and this may give them enough information to join your wireless network. Computers and smart devices often blindly trust any other device that's connected to the same network as them which may give a baddie access to your smart devices even though you've already changed the default password. To prevent this, pick your own wireless network name, or SSID, and a strong wireless password to go with it. If you're also asked to choose a wireless network security protocol, choose WPA2 or WPA3. Don't choose WEP. WEP is silly and old. My final piece of smart home security advice is to think long and hard about the types of devices you have in your house and how they're used. Do you really need an internet connected rice cooker or a smart coffee machine? Every internet connected device that you add to your house increases the risk of an attacker getting access to your home network. Of course, there are legitimate reasons why you might want to have a camera in your house. Perhaps you're looking after someone with special medical needs and you want to make sure they haven't fallen down and injured themselves. Or perhaps you're using a camera to monitor your children while you're upstairs watching Rick and Morty and drinking beer. 
but for me personally, having one of these devices inside my house does not bring me enough benefit to outweigh the risks. With every new smart device that you look to buy, you should weigh up the risks associated with adding that device to your network against the rewards or benefits that you're likely to get by buying it. In many cases, you can reduce the risk of adding these devices to your network by following the steps I outlined earlier. Following these techniques will tip the balance away from the risks and allow you to enjoy the benefits of the device with greater peace of mind. If you want more tips on how to keep your network and smart home safe from hackers, then click the subscribe button and you'll be notified when I release a new video. Now go watch this next video, which shows you a slightly more advanced way to increase your smart home security. And together, we can make your home smarter.